Hello everyone and thank you for tuning in to another edition of Reporter's Notebook. Today I am joined by producer Robert Ramiro. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, good to be on for the first time. Yeah? Are you nervous? A little bit, yeah, but the first time doing this kind of thing, but you know, I'm excited so I'm ready to get things Get, get, get this show on the road, see oh, how it goes. Okay, so what a lot of our viewers may notice after hearing you just for a little bit is that you have sort of a New York accent. Where are you from? All right, I'll explain the story for the millionth time to all the new people that I meet. Um, I was originally just, I was, I was born in New York back in uh, old 97. Then I moved down to uh, Wilmington, North Carolina when I was four years old, so in 2001. And then I grew up there all my life, went to um, college at ECU here in Greenville. And then I graduated in 2019 and then got my job a couple months later here at WNCT as a news producer. Okay, so I, I heard a little bit of attitude when you when you mm -hmm. were doing that, but that's okay. That's 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 it's just it's fine. you know it's just it's it's part of my personality. I mean, it's, there's no no malice in it. It's just that's the way I am. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think that's you kind of need to have that kind of like tough skin when you're a producer or when you're in news or anything like that. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, for sure. Um, so ECU, how was school at ECU? What did what did you study? Uh, study communications with a concentration in journalism. Um, I went uh into the sports area of reporting. So I worked at the East Carolinian at ECU as a sports reporter, and then I moved on to the radio station called WZMB 91.3 FM, uh, where I did some radio work and did play-by-play -play calling and stuff like that. I had my own show, was in the uh, sports department, and a little bit of news as well. So just trying to get my feet wet in a little bit every aspect of media. So went from there, now I'm in behind the scenes of a doing a producing the the news so I'm just trying to get my feet wet still even though it feels feels like even though I graduate I'm still like kind of kind of like in a little grad school kind of thing my first career job and still trying to get my feet wet in all the aspect of the of the news field so what do you like best about producing uh, what I what I've learned to love about it is uh, being creative and figuring things out what, how you can make your show better and how you could tell stories you know I think it's it's really cool when I put stories out there to let the public know in the Greenville community all across uh, Eastern North Carolina on uh, things going on. I want to really show them uh, the, or tell it the best way that they know and I know uh, the way I've grown up and or come to love Greenville since I first came up with the college here back in 2015, so about five years now. So it, it's definitely been a learning thing for me trying to figure out what works best. And I think what I love about it is being able to tell stories that I know is the best, what I feel is the best way that I think would be bring attention, that the viewers will find um, attention grabbing, what, what showing them what's really important and how things are going, what's really going on in the community. So, you know, I've come to love a lot about telling the community what's going on. So I, I do hear that passion about, you know, uh, living in North Carolina and, and storytelling. What are some hidden gems of this area that you think should be kind of really featured on the news or kind of um, shown throughout the community that this is, some, or that really represents the community? Greenville has specifically has really taken a, a step toward becoming a young professional town. From the, when I first came here, it was just, I feel like it was all ECU. There's nothing wrong with that at all. It just felt like this ECU was the staple for, um, college students a very college-like atmosphere but when i've come in over time all the the projects of new apartments being built in uptown more restaurants being added at dickinson avenue all these new businesses come into greenville it feels like this is becoming more of a growing community and um all these you got everything you got people all along the the coast of east of east north carolina across the crystal coast and outer banks and such that all are still a part of this community as well, and I've seen a lot of business growth from them, especially since I've been in news. Um, I haven't paid attention to a lot when I was in Greenville, but since being in the WNCT for about a year now, I'm seeing how all these growing the kind of East um, projects and construction work that's really grown this community. So I've seen a lot of steps that the community has taken to really um, giving young professionals like myself the step in the right direction to more overall successful career. Okay, now, 
this is this will be my last question. This is the question that you've been been waiting for. Oh boy. Um, so for our viewers, I would love to get their input either on social media, Facebook, Twitter, whatever, about the best apple. Okay. <laughs> Because Robert and I have a feud going on about what apple is the best. I say red delicious apples when they're super, super, like right before they're ripe and they're more of an intense red color, like a vibrant red color than like the deeper red color. Th that's the best apple there is. I don't know what Robert's is. See, the thing is with that is, is I'm going to uh, uh, a little uh, push shit back at you. You say they have to Here be super right. That means like how they're not normally that good. They have to be a super right kind of thing. So like they have to be a perfect way. I think and my favorite is Macintosh apples because I think you can't go wrong with them. No. They could be a little bit tart, they're a little bit sweet. Mm -mm. They're, they're very juicy. And out of all the apples, I think they're the best ones to go. I think Granny Smith is a good contender because I do, I, that's per preference. I do like the sour tarts of some fruits. So Granny Smith is good too. But Red Delicious, it just, it has a, too much of an aftertaste. You have to get it right, right for it to be even edible in my opinion. So that's where I stand on that. You know what? I actually sometimes sometimes you just have to have to have a few of the draw. Not, I don't want to say drawbacks because it's not a drawback, but you have to have a few concessions for the finer things in life. I'm just gonna leave it there. Also, I just want to say that this feud actually went to the grocery store mm -hmm. when I saw Robert getting out of his car at like the food lion on 10th. And I yelled at him and I was like, we are going to the produce section right now and I'm going to show you which apple is the best apple. This was all after I saw him eating an apple in, in the newsroom and I was like, why that apple? Yeah, because I brought an apple for a week, started eating it. I didn't realize the whole time she wanted to do this uh, notebook in the first place was to criticize my apple choice. And I thought she was just going to say hi at the grocery store, but no, it was to criticize my choice of apples. That is true. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. And again, be sure to tune in to Reporter's Notebook here at WNCT. And we'll see you next week with someone who has a better taste in apples. Good luck with that. Okay. <laughs>